Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shock Treatment. Today I'd like to be talking to you about motocross tyres. Now, motocross tyres, or any type of tyre, to me is the ultimate performance item on the motorcycle. If we're looking for higher speeds out of the bike, I mean obviously we can only ride to the levels of grip. And your maximum speed is going to be achieved just prior to that point where traction breaks. Once it breaks, it's all over. So anything we can do to extend traction is going to mean that we can obviously get down that track with uh, faster speeds. And so knowing more about your tyres is going to be really, really beneficial. And if you can treat these with the respect that they deserve, you'll get so much more out of your racing. Now one of the biggest mistakes that I see made with tyres is in the actual selection of the tyre compound. Now motocross tyres aren't like other tyres. If we um, if we look at road racing tyres, if we look at Formula One, etc., any form of racing, we'll hear people describe the soft tyre as being the ultimate in grip. And so if you watch MotoGP, if they're trying to cut the fastest lap time, if they're trying to qualify and get as far up the grid as possible, they'll bung that soft rubber in. And then they'll go out and they'll uh, uh, go as hard as they can and, and uh, ultimately put, produce their fastest laps. With motocross tyres, when you see them marked as soft, that soft tyre actually has the hardest rubber. And what they're talk, referring to in terms of the soft is the soft terrain. And so it's much like a footballer's spikes. If you go out and you've got a footballer who's running on the soft ground, basically the spikes are gonna uh, be spaced far enough apart that they will penetrate that ground and they're stiff enough that they can then claw at the ground and create grip. It's the same thing with the, the rubber in these tyres. They have the hardest compound possible. And uh, once again, they're designed to penetrate the surface in order to work. When we're riding on hard pack terrain, what we want is we actually want the softest rubber. It's much like a tennis player on an indoor court. They're going to have very soft shoes that uh, have the ultimate grip, and they're going to be able to, to get the best interaction between themselves and the surface. And it's the same thing with our, our tyres. And so... With the, uh, the hard pack tyres, you'll find that the knobs are spaced closer together, soft, soft rubber, and they provide us with the, uh, the ultimate result. Now, um, what we do find is that people will go out with these soft tyres and they'll run them on hard pack in the belief that they're going to get the most grip. But what will end up happening is uh, the tyres come under a lot of stress because the, the rubber is, is, quite, uh, is quite hard, it's not durable, it won't flex as well. And, uh, and because it's spaced further apart, the, uh, each knob gets a lot more pressure placed on it. And so it's quite common when you're running a soft tyre on hard terrain to break the outer knobs or, or experience what they call chunking on the tyre. So just keep that in mind and be very mindful of, um, of having the right tyre for the right situation. If you're racing, when we were racing in the Nationals, basically we had a pile of tyres that you couldn't jump over. We had mud tyres, sand tyres, soft tyres, intermediates, hards. And what we could do is we could actually change our tyre to suit the changing conditions of the track. If we went out in the morning and the track had been well groomed, a lot of water put in it, we may even go out in our first practice with a mud tyre. And then as the, the track developed, more riders gone over it and so on, we would then change to the soft and then we might be finding ourselves intermediate hard or whatever, depending upon the conditions. And that way we could get the ultimate result for every outing on the motorcycle. Now let's have a look at pressure. Okay, if we were to run around the pits and ask 20 different riders, you know, what pressure they're running in their tyres, chances are they're going to be telling you around 14 psi within a couple of psi of that. So some might be 15, some may be as low as 12. But uh, it's amazing how similar all our pressures are. Now if we're trying to get a, the best out of the tyre, what we want is the best stability from the carcass and the best contact patch. Now, if we started everything at 14 psi, While that bike's on the stand, it's going to have a nice shape to it and everything, but if we take the bike off the stand and we put a 60 kilo rider on it, what's going to happen is we'll get a little flattening at the bottom and obviously our sidewalls will tip out a little bit more. Now the angle of the sidewall is critical for support and that support's going to provide stability and it's going to give us the cornering that we're looking for and the amount of contact patch will provide ultimately the grip. Now if we grab a 100 kilo rider and we put them on the same tyre, uh, what's going to happen is the sidewalls are going to splay out a little bit more and we will get a larger contact patch. Now, 
it would be fair to say we've got a better grip on the earth with this, but um, what will happen is when those sidewalls splay out, they actually fail to support the vehicle adequately and we'll find that we don't get the same level of control. Now, if we want to take that a little step further and say, okay, let's look at a flat tyre, uh, obviously we've got maximum contact patch, but uh, we've got zero sidewall support. So we'll find if we're riding on that tyre, it'll be very, you know, it'll be a mess. So, so what we want to try and do is get the ultimate tyre shape. Now, it's inconceivable that that's going to be at 14 PSI for every rider. And obviously if we look at uh, extending that beyond rider weight, we can look at the rider demand. Now a pro level rider is obviously going to stress his tyre a lot more than a novice. So it's inconceivable that a pro level rider will have the same tyre pressure as a novice. But amazingly, so many people out there are still running that 14 PSI. Okay, so how do we find our ideal pressure? The answer to that is to test. Now, one thing I must stress with testing is we only ever test at 80 to 85% of our capacity. We do not want to be going out there going 100%. Uh, simply because that tuning range may take you into unfamiliar territory. And so what I like to do, the most time efficient method I've found, is to start off at a higher pressure and have someone at the side of the track with a, with a tyre gauge. And what I want to do is cut a couple laps at higher pressure, come back in, get them to drop a couple of PSI out and note the change. Did it get better? Did it get worse? If it got better, let's drop another couple of PSI and try that. And keep going until you find it got worse. And once you've found that uh, you've gone beyond the ideal, you can then come back to that pressure and note the zone that you're working in. What I then do is I again go down to my conventional 14 PSI and I want to I be uh, comparing against that just to make sure I do have a valid improvement. And uh, once I'm happy, well that will become my new pressure. Now I'm pointing above here because I'm 105 kilos and it's more likely for me I'm going to find my best results above the 14 psi. For you, you might come down, you might find it's at 14 psi or you might even be below. But keep on going until you go better, 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 worse. And then go back to your ideal pressure and you'll have the best out of your tyre. Right, let's talk about tyre widths. Now, as you know, tyres come in different sizes and the reason for that is uh, the tyre itself will be appropriate to the size bike that you're putting it on. If you're putting it on a 250F or a 125 two-stroke, you'll have a much smaller tyre than what comes on a 450F. The reason for that is the weight and the size of the tyre is appropriate to the power delivery that's being offered from that vehicle. But if you find that you're in a really low grip situation, sometimes it's really beneficial to actually put a larger tyre on there and have a larger footprint. That'll give you more drive grip. But that, uh, that decision comes with costs. Okay, so you have to understand that you've now got heavier tyres, you've got more mass in motion, and that will mean that your acceleration is a little duller. Now, if you find your acceleration is too slow, obviously you can make a gearing change. You will also find that your braking area or your braking zone will, will now increase. And so because of that, you may be pulling the lever on two or three minutes earlier. With your heavier tyre, you've now got um, a more gyroscopic effect as well. So that will mess with your steering a little. So you might want to sharpen your steering up. And also, more mass in motion will mess with your suspension settings. So be, a, be prepared to make changes there as well. So uh, it's very rare that anyone on a 450 is going to go down and use 250 tyres. I mean, you, you could, but um, the only benefit I would see would be in steering. And uh, if you try to get that sharper steering, you'd really want to be in a high grip situation as well. You know, so it's a rare thing that you'd see a 450 guy running with a, a smaller tyre, but there are some big gains sometimes with the 250s, particularly if, uh, if we're chasing that ultimate hookup. Okay, let's look at brands. Now, there are a number of brands out there, and as I said, they all tell you that they're the greatest, and um, we'd all like to believe that, but the reality is that all these tyre brands will vary. They'll vary in carcass construction, they'll vary in compounds that they're using. And so in order to find out what best works for us, we need to test. And now ultimately, if you can have a variety of different brands that you can go back to back with, it'll make life very, very easy, uh, but it is expensive. The best thing you can do is get a few mates together who are riding very similar bikes and you can set them up. Everyone buys a set of tyres and then you can go back to back and you can test them all. When, uh, when we ran our team last year, 
what we did was we wanted to know exactly what was going to be the best brand for us. Now, we couldn't test them all, but we tested three brands. We tested Pirelli, we tested Dunlop, and we tested Bridgestone. Now, Pirelli and Dunlop are the most popular ones here on the east coast of Australia. And we threw Bridgestone into the mix because that's what I used to race on. And so uh, we tested blindly, okay? We got uh, soft tyres, intermediate tyres, and hard tyres from every brand. And what we did was we found the ultimate pressure for each tyre. And once we did that, we then put the riders out on the track and uh, we didn't let them know what rubber they were riding on. This is pretty easy. We could just bung the tyres in, put a cover over it, let our rider get on board, take the cover off and away he went. And so by them not knowing what they were testing on, we got the most accurate feedback. And for those that are interested, the, the Bridgestones actually came out on top in the soft criteria and they came out again on the, the hard pack throwing criteria. And so our hard terrain tyre was a, a standout performer from Bridgestone with Dunlop coming in second and Pirelli third. In the soft tyres, it was actually a little different. In the soft tyres, the, the Pirelli came in a very close second and the Dunlop not far behind that. One of the things that we did do as well is we switched the Pirelli front uh, and put the Pirelli front on with the, the Bridgestone rear and actually, that actually gave us the best combination possible. So you can do your own testing. I mean, these are only three brands that we tested. You can try Michelin, you can try Maxxis, you can try whatever you want to try. And uh, hopefully you'll get the, the result that's best for you. Now, by finding that the combination actually ran better for us, it uh, throws a little question over sponsorship. You know, you really want to make sure if you're going to get sponsorship for tyres that you're getting sponsored by the tyre company that you like the best. I mean, these things are the ultimate performer. And the last thing you want to do is turn up at your next race meeting on a tyre that's not as good as it could be simply because you saved a few dollars. In fact, for many years when my son was racing, we just, uh, we just paid for all our tyres. And the reason being, we could come up with whichever, comp uh, whichever combination that we wanted and we could use the tyre that we wanted for that particular track. And so it gave us a lot of options. And if you're hopping in your car and you're driving a thousand kilometres to go to your next race meeting, the last thing you want to do is turning up on a tyre that's not as good as it could be. Okay, hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much.